Hi, it's Luke Bowman here. Welcome to my video lesson for Snake in My Boot by John Petrucci from his phenomenal new album, Terminal Velocity. I'm sure you're enjoying that album as much as I am. Hopefully you've already seen my lesson for the track Terminal Velocity itself. If not, check it out. There is a link somewhere. I hadn't intended to do any more transcriptions from the album because I'm sure there will be a, an official book coming out from John at some point soon. But I absolutely loved this track when I first heard it. From reading the reviews, I appreciate it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I am an 80s rocker at heart and this song really speaks to me. Some really balls to the wall rock and roll guitar. It's not typical Petrucci, but he's definitely putting enough of his own style in there to put his stamp on it. And I think it's so much fun to play. The other good thing about this and the other reason I've done the transcription is a lot of us do struggle playing all the technical and fast lines that John plays. So I think there's a lot in this track that can appeal to players of all levels. There's definitely things you can take from this, licks you can learn and reapply, some cool riffs that you can throw in too. There's definitely some easier parts, but there's been some difficult parts in there for those of you at an advanced level. So I do believe there's something for everybody in this track. And I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun playing it, as I have. If you do enjoy the lesson, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Hit the little bell. It'd be great to have you follow me on Facebook and Instagram as well. There are links below, in addition to a link to the PDF tab. So get yourself a copy of that. There's also a link to a donation button. OK, let's zoom in and we'll get started with the lesson. OK, so I'm going to take you through this track bar by bar, but not necessarily note by note. There's quite a lot of repetition that goes on. There's quite a lot of common themes that you will see coming back. So I'm intending to play some of the passages quite slowly so you can see how I'm fingering them and doing it. So you can reapply yourself. One big caveat is that I have not seen John do a video of this. So in terms of where I'm playing things on the neck, how I'm fingering it, is my interpretation. It could be very different when you see John playing it. If you can see a better way to do it or something that's more comfortable for you, please do that. The main thing is just to have fun playing it. And again, apologies if I've got anything wrong. There's a lot of notes in here. The chances are that some of them aren't quite correct. I'm mostly centered around the key of A. It's a good old rock and roll song. We've got the A, we've got the D. We've got the E, lots of power chords going on. But John is adding a bit of his own flavor to some of the licks just to spice it up a bit. I think you'll see a lot of riffs that you recognize from other places here. I think John's borrowed heavily from the history of rock music um, and reapplied it very effectively in his own way. Definitely see a bit of Randy Rhodes in here, a bit of Van Halen and a lot of other things I'm sure you'll be able to pick up from it. These first two bars, start with the slide in. <laughs> okay, so centered around this A power chord. And we do this and then we're doing this pull off. Fourth fret to the open string on the D, third fret to the open string on the A, and then the same thing on the bottom E. Give them little bends, little quarter tone bends. Very common kind of thing, think Sweet Home Alabama, that kind of stuff. It's that kind of vibe, but a bit heavier. Back to the A chord. And then another feature of this is John is making it a bit heavier by putting a few of the palm muted A string chugs in there in between. The next part, going A to C to D and power chords. It's a bit fret on the D and G strings and slide it up to the seventh fret, keeping this A in through. Also put quite a bit of a bra to on that to make it sing. And then to finish the bar, fifth fret on your D, the third fret on the bottom, and the upside. So, all together. And that is the basis of the main riff that repeats many times but with quite a few variations. Don't forget that I put the direction buttons below in the description so you can jump around to the various parts as and when you need to. Also, I have put a playthrough of the Guitar Pro tablature at the very end, so you can have a look at the tablature playing through on the screen. You can slow that down on YouTube if that helps as well to go back over things. Okay, next bar, similar kind of vibe. Bit like that. So you start off again with that A power chord, and then we do another little bluesy kind of run. We're sliding up from the 3rd to 4th fret in the A, jump across the 2nd fret in the G, pull off to the open, 4th fret in the D, pull off to the open D, back to the open G, and then the 3rd fret in the A, that little quarter fret bend. And what 
doing is wrong from here. What well, not? Bit ACDC ish this. So A to the second fret. And I'm spelling out the D chord here, so it's kind of a D chord over an F sharp. The third fret in the bottom. I'm not sure these notes are ringing out, I can kind of hear them. So I've put anything I put in brackets, I'm kind of not entirely sure if there's something there. There's a lot of guitar parts on that track, double tracked, and a lot of distortion, so it's hard to pick out everything. But it would make sense to go. And then the fourth fret, bending that slightly again as you go back to the A. So that bar. Kind of walking up that bass line. That's a very common progression. A, D, D, especially in rock and roll. We've all heard it before, but it sounds good. Okay, next bar. Next bar is very similar to the first one, except we're starting it. So instead of just playing the power chord, we're doing open string, third fret, fourth fret, and the A. G string and then doing the pull-offs. Next bar, same as we did before, and then enter this little lick. So fourth fret on your G string, pull off to the second to the open, and then exactly the same on the G string. Kind of familiar, which is not a problem. We all reuse things that we've been influenced by, so I'm not having a go at John for that. He's taken a lot of these great licks and riffs and really made it his own in this track, so I'm a big fan. Then we do the same again. As we did earlier. Instead of going to this G sharp, we're going to go to a C chord, C power chord. I think I can hear the G ringing through in the bass to make it sound really big. Could well be that John's actually playing this on his seven strings and we're getting some of the lower notes here, I'm not sure. This is taking us into a D chord. So that first stuff's all been kind of centered around that A. We're now moving to a D to the center. It's the fourth chord of the A. And what we're doing here. First bar. It's the D chord. And add the third fret of your A string. So the C here. Stay, stay the same, and have this little run at the end. We're walking down, so it's kind of playing a C chord. C9 or C sus2, and then that's kind of playing a G chord. So the riff's almost like D, C, G, D, C, G. That kind of vibe going on. Ending with this little look, lick, pulling off third fret on the way, second fret to the open, coming to the bottom, third fret to the north, E string. So, keeping the top two strings ringing through. Then repeats. First half of the bar, and then we This is kind of implying an F to a G. So we're going to go hammer on, open E string to the first fret to the open G string, and then first fret to the third fret to the G and B strings. So that bar. Again, that B string, not convinced I can hear it ringing through. And here's something, leave it in, leave it out if you, whichever you prefer. So those two bars together. And then back to the main riff. This time though, when we go to this D, instead of going up to the 7th fret, I can hear an F sharp in here. So open A still, fourth fret the D, and 7th fret in the G. It's still D major. The A in the bass. And then we have this nice little lick. Gives it a bit more of a Petrucci kind of feel. Starts off open D, second fret, fourth fret, open G, but then the first fret and the way back down, open, third fret, 
might be a kind of expected to go. Just putting that flat five in there. The next bar we've done before. This time, instead of going up to G sharp, we're going down to the F sharp. So we're moving to the keys. So we've done the A, we've done the D, back to the A, and we're going to the E. I'm going to go through this part relatively quickly because it is quite straightforward once you get used to the rhythm and the chords of it. So the first bar, so we're going from D, power chord, to the power chord, and up to the F. Just sliding them up. Getting that double chug. Definitely the heaviest sounding part of the song. So the next bar, do the same from the D to the E. But then back down from the E to the D. And then it repeats. The next part's a bit different. So moving here to the D and G strings. Then six, nine here. And then sliding up the sixth fret. 7th fret. The next one we're kind of moving up an octave. So we're playing the D chord up here, D power chord. D power chord to the F. And we go back down again. Time 7 6 on the A and D, to 8 7, to 7 6. So it's pretty much variations on the same thing. We're pretty much always going D to E to F back to E, or D to E and E back to D. Different voicings of the, of the chord. Okay, then we're going to finish off back where we started. And we'll work our way down. So, starting off from the F to the E. Open E, E to D, open E, D to the C, open E, and then the C, dropping your third fret of that power chord down to the second fret. Possibly adding that open G string in there as well. Okay, so have a listen through that passage. It's relatively straightforward. The rhythm pretty much stays the same. It's just the chords that are changing, but use the tablature to work those out. And then we're back to the main riff. With some different variations going on here. So the first time, sounds like that. And what we're doing is we're sliding up from the fourth fret to the fifth fret on the D, and then hitting the open G. You're doing that twice. Pull off the fourth fret to the open, third fret to the open, and the string. Like that. And then we do the same thing with the C to the D. And have this little lick. Finish that bar, so you're hammering on. Open D string to the fifth fret to the seventh fret. Fifth fret your G, pull off the seventh fret your D, pull off. And then the next bar. Slightly different, kind of using the A blue scale here. So hammer on fifth fret to the sixth fret in your G to the top E string, fifth fret, sixth fret, fifth fret, seven, five, four in your D, and then a variation of the lick we've already done. But then the first fret, all together. hammering on trill kind of thing. Previous versions we were doing there. Walking that bass line up, we're going to still walk that bass line up, but we're going to do hammering on, pulling off. So basically hammering on, second fret, to your open E, twice, third fret, twice, fourth fret, twice. And then we've got a bit of a harmonic thing going on here. So, this is all on the A string. I'm going to be palm muting it. Rhythm wise, have a listen. I think it's kind of like 16th note triplets going on here. But what we're doing. 
those harmonics here. So just on the top of your third fret, like that, to the fourth fret, to the fifth fret. That kind of thing which you hear a lot. It's a very popular thing that Eddie Van Halen used to do. And then we finish off that bar in the same way. So like that. And then we're going to move from A to C to the power chords. Now these are big sounding chords on the original. I get the feeling again that he's got the lower notes in, so he's C power chord here, but the third fret on your E string as well. Kind of doing like fifth. Very quick. Now this to me looks like a D sus four. So you've got your twelfth fret there instead of the eleventh fret on the G string, and he's just pulling down it. Almost sweet picking it. Then we have another big bar of hammering on and pulling off. On the twelfth fret in the next bar. So this is all in your A string. Kind of again going up the blue scale. A, 3, 4, A, 4, 5, A, 5, 6, A, 6, 7, A, 9, 10, 11. And then we get to that 12th fret in the next bar. And this is when the song starts getting interesting, when John starts throwing some, some of his own licks in here to really spice it up. Okay, so this next bar, really cool lick. Very John again with the sliding. A lot of these licks, I'm not going to go them through them in too much detail, especially the fast ones. You can work them out yourself with the tablature. But this one, I believe, he's playing it up here. So actually, you can hear the pulling off in the previous bar. But he's moving up to that 12th fret, to the 14th fret on D, 12th fret down to the 9th fret, slide to the 10th fret, back up 9th to the 10th, the 12th, 10 all the way down to 3, 5, This time on the D, kind of highlighting a D dominant seven here. So same kind of rhythmic pattern as we've done all the way through for these riffs, but we're moving fourth fret and G, to sixth fret and your B, to fifth and seventh. So that is a D dominant seven. We're just sliding in from a fret below. Next bar, we're going to do eight five to seven five. Like your dominant seven, so it's four. To a dominant seven. And then end up with that chord there. Seventh fret and G, fifth on the top two strings, and the D. Staying on the D, and then move up to. So we're moving up to the tenth and twelfth fret, sliding up to the hundred and thirteenth. So this is D. Seven chord up here, and we're sliding in again from down to fret below. And then we have this nice little lick, and then we have a nice little lick to get us back to the A chord. Another kind of pulling off to open string lick. Not exactly sure that's how John's playing it, but so we have fingered it on here. So if you can find a better way to do it, it's definitely an open D string going on. So 17, 14, open D string, 16, 12, open D string, 14, 10. 7th fret and G string down to 4th, down to the open. Finish that bar off. It's not an easy one, but it sounds really good. And then we're back to the original riff, the second bar. Sounds a bit like that. So we're going to A to C. This time we're going to drop down. 4th fret and 5th fret and D G. And then we're doing a little hammer on trill. Seventh fret on your D string to the open D. And then some harmonics. Ninth fret on your A string. Fifth fret, fifth fret on your D and G. Seventh fret on your B string. And then pulling off. Fourth root open on your G string. First fret just open on your D. We've done before, third fret on the bottom two strings, so it's slightly different. It's that bar. Something like that. And we have that bar that we had before. Back to the E. 
Now this part, I think the second guitar comes in playing the top E string. First I thought it was kind of the top two strings with the open E ringing really through. But I can also hear that bottom one to play, so I don't think it could be. But then, you to keep that G muted. But when you listen to the original recording, that top E string keeps going through after John plays this, when he goes into the fast licks that are coming. That keeps going, so I think there's a second guitar part on the recording. So I've transcribed it like this. Feel free to do it your own way. Sounds quite nice with the... Take the notes that we're playing, play them on the B string with your opening, or you can play it with the octaves. So what I'm doing here is octaves, so you're playing a note on the A string, starting off the fifth fret, and a note on the G string. Moving from the fifth to the seventh, to the eighth, up to the eleventh, back to the eighth, back to the seventh, back to the first, to the fourth. Sounds a bit like. A bit like that. Have a listen to the record. I think it's kind of 16th note strumming going on there. But it sounds pretty cool. Quite, it's got that exotic flavour. And that is because we're kind of using a, what I'm calling a diminished scale. I'm sure somebody can tell me what it really is. But the next run. couple of bars I believe is a diminished scale. Good news is pattern wise it's quite easy to do. So 4, 5, 7, 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, 8, 6, 7, 9, 6, 7, 9, 7, 9, 10, 7, 9, 10, 9, 10, 9, 10, 12, 12, 10, 11, 12, 13 and then we're just coming back down. Try and play that at any kind of speed, you can work it out yourself. It's very fast. As you, often with John, I'm pretty sure it's all alternate picking. Uh, 16th note triplets. A lot of fun. Cool sound and lick, and very Petrucci esque. And we go back to the octaves. This time down the 10th fret, to the 13th fret, to the 14th fret, up to the 16th fret, and then up to the 17th fret. And then we've got a similar kind of lick in that diminished scale shape. Up to that 19th fret. It's kind of the same pattern in terms of fingerings. 10, 12, 13, 11, 12, 14, 12, 14, 15, 12, 14, 15, 13, 14, 16, 13, 14, 16, 15, 17, 18, and then ending up 16, 17, 18, 19. So you put that extra chromatic note in there. And then we're just coming back down. It's so very similar to the run we down, did down here, but up here, a lot of alternate picking, very fast. Okay, the next section is over the A chord underneath. And it's kind of like a really cool bluesy solo in A. Not going to go through the solo note by note, but let me try and play each bar slowly, at least so you've got a reference. So that first bar. Very much around the... And that A major pentatonic with a few of the minor notes thrown in. The next bar. I like the way we're adding that major third up here. I use this quite a lot in my playing. It really sounds good, so that's something you can reuse yourself. Next bar, and it's staying in the same shape to start with. Goes a bit like that, so we're kind of moving from the shape. Moving shapes from the pentatonic up here. There are some great little blues licks in here, bluesy rock licks that you can reapply for yourself. And then we have another sliding lick. Into the next bar. Again, using those, those kind of things that John uses a lot, those sliding down and then jumping up to a higher note. Sounds really good. Then we have that big bend, so you're bending the 17th fret. All the way up to your 20th there, so you're bending an E up to a G. Yeah. 
finishing off in that pentatonic pattern up there. And then we go. That next bar. So we're kind of playing around with this triad up here and the blue scale sliding in from the minor third to the major third. And then we're finishing off with another fast bluesy lick. Like that, which is really cool. It's getting very high up the neck. If you've got 24 frets, you're doing well and you're going to need them a bit later. I can't play there. But at this point, backing is now playing a D chord. So we'll change to a D, so we're starting off. And then we're going to go. It's that bar. And then we go to more hammering on. That bar. So this is only D string hammering on. Sixth, seventh fret. Seventh fret, ninth fret. And the tenth fret. And the twelfth and fourteenth fret. The rhythm of that is quite tricky, so have a listen to it. it sounds really cool. And then we can have a D dominant seven arpeggio. D major arpeggio. Just adding that 17th fret. This is adding the dominant 7th, the C. And ending up and spelling out the arpeggio. Spelling out parts of the arpeggio there. In octaves. And then another sliding lick. Half of that bar. And the kind of bluesy lick down here in the deep pentatonic. Minor third to the major third again. And bend up. 12th fret. Don't stop on your G and B strings. Okay, so the next bar we're back to a, an A in the bass. So we're back to the A minor pentatonic. This little lick. Quite a simple one down. down seventh and fifth frets. We're then going to move up with this lick. Goes something like that. So we're moving up here from this position from the pentatonic scale up to here. Run down. Down to there. So from the 17th fret, the top E string. Back up. Fingering wise, you're going to start moving down here. So 17, 14, 12. Down to 9th fret. And then finishing the bar. down to your A here at the 7th fret on your D string. And finish the passage, keep on going down and then up on the bottom A string. Okay, so that's kind of the end of that part of the solo. Some great licks in there. And then we go into this kind of repeating riff. Again over the E chord this time. So, open E string, bottom open E string, twice and then hammer along, four, five, seven, and five, seven, eight, and two strings. And then the power chord, down to the D, getting the fret with the fret in the chord. That. And then this kind of theme keeps repeating. We're going up the same as we did in the previous bar. Again, this time up to the F 
chord. And then. Another slight variation on it. So we go up again. On the bottom string. Fifth fret and away. To the sixth fret on the D string. And one pull off to the seventh fret. And back down here. Seven, five, seven, five. For this last bar, we start the lick the same way and then we're going to move to kind of a diminished arpeggio. So we start off again with the 457, the open string 457, 5867, 5869, 10, So it's useful to get used to that. arpeggio so basically I always think of it as being first finger and fourth finger if you have a finger per fret and it keeps changing going up one fret each each string and then next bar we're going to keep on going up same shape so once you get to the G and your B strings with the diminished you need to go to that shape so it's one four three one four so here we're going 7, 10, 9, 7, 10, 9, 7, 10, up to the 13th fret, back down the same shape, 10, 12, 13, 10, so we've gone, and then we jump up to the next shape, so the diminish is always moving up in minor thirds, so in spaces of 3 frets, so the next one would be, so what we do next, so 16, 13, 15, and up again, 19. 16, 18, 19, 16. So that bar gets faster as it goes through. Slowly I'll do it alternate picking. Like that. And then we go into a very fast two bar run all the way back down the neck. Again, fingering wise, I'm not sure if this is exactly how John's playing it. Notes I think are correct. He might be playing in slightly different positions. So this licks quite a bit of chromaticism in here as well. So we're starting off here at the 19th fret, so 19, 18, 16, 19, 18, 16. 18, 17, 16, 15. 16, 17, 16, 15. A bit of chromatic there, and then same again here. 16, 15, 14, 13, there twice. In the G string, so we've gone. Then 15, 14, 13, 12, 14, 13, 12, 11, 14, 13, 12, 11. So it's quite a chromatic run. It sounds pretty cool when you do it at speed, which I can't, but when you hear John doing it and when you practice it and get it up to speed, it'll sound great. And then we continue on down. This is where I think I might have got the fingering wrong because we're doing a lot on this bottom E string. It might actually move down further to make it easier to play. So if you can find a better way to finger it, please do. So then on the bottom E we're going 13, 12, 11, 10, 7, 6, 5, 4, 7, 6, 5, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1, the open. So we're almost going chromatically all the way down the string there. So we on that open E. So we end up on that open E string. Whammy dips, whammy bar, and dive it back down again. And then we have a couple of bars rest, which is very nice at this point. Let's slide down and we're back to the main riff. Which I'm not going to go through again, it pretty much repeats as it did at the first, the first time around, so have a look at the tablet just to get that. The only difference is when we're moving to D chord, very cool fast lick. same as we did before. John then goes into a crazy 30 second note run which I'm not going to try and play. Tablet is all here below so take it through again check the guitar pro version at the end um, and it also ends up at the 24th fret which I can't play on here with some cool arpeggios so I'm going to skip these couple of bars and pick it up back here in this bar and 
we slide down again. And then as we get to the end of the song here, there's a bit of a rile goes on, so the, the beat slows down, um, which is not how I've, I've had to transcribe it to fit in with a metronome. So it isn't a bar of 9-8, it's just slowing down um, with the drums. But if you play along with John, you can get kind of the feel of it. And it starts like that, so 7th fret, 4th fret, open, 4th fret, open D string, 5th fret, G B strings, and then and you play a very similar leg up here, up an octave, 19, 16, 17 on your D string, and then 17th fret on your G and B. All of these notes, lots of big vibrato to make it sing. And then we go to a big open D chord, adding the open sound and then there's a cool descending lick which is kind of repeating the same thing down the octave each time again fingering wise not sure this is how John plays it so it starts so you're sliding up to 19th fret and top E string bend it up half a tone 17th fret 20th fret and B string 19th fret bend it up half a tone and down again to the 17th fret to the 19th fret and then I would move position to the 16th fret, bend that up half tone, and down 14, 12, move again to the 11th. So you see a pattern here, it's the same notes repeating as we go down the octave. And finishing off 4th fret. Finishing up on the 5th fret of your A string. Back to the A chord. Some of those harmonics. This time we're starting closer to your second fret here. So there's quite a few little harmonics in that range. Basically, it's basically spelling out an A dominant seven chord. Right. The second fret on your G string to the open string. And some artificial harmonics which I can't hear because I don't have headphones on. A bit of whammy bars. Then the A, and you finish on the A. So that last part, as it slows down, the licks are pretty cool. Have a listen to it, the timing of it, and playing along with John. But that's pretty much it. I hope you've managed to get something from that lesson. There are some great licks in there that you can reapply, even if you don't learn the whole song, even if you can't play the fast passages. There's some really good stuff to take away from it. So stay tuned for the Guitar Pro video, which is coming up next, so you can watch through on that. Have a flick back using the direction buttons if you've missed anything. Any questions, let me know. But thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon on another video.